this is the beginning. Humans are born, and then they grow to become adults and make a family of their own. Right up until this decade, the genes carried in our bodies were exclusively the result of chance. The only way you could intervene in the process was by choosing whom you would mate with, and that was as much wishful thinking as anything. But that is now changing with the revolution of genetic engineering, the science of understanding and manipulating DNA. Edinburgh is home of one of the world's leading centers for research on genetic engineering, the Roslin Institute. Embryologist William Ritchie was a member of the team that cloned Dolly the sheep back in 1996. He explains the revolutionary way of manipulating human genes, germline genetic engineering. Germline here refers to the egg and sperm cells of a human being. Changes in those cells would be passed on to our children. Well, germline means that um, it's passed on through the, the germline so that um, if the germ cells have the modification then it would be passed on to the next gen generation. So if you modify the germline then that modification will be passed on to the next generation. We know two different methods to change human genes. The less controversial method of handling human genes is called somatic therapy. It involves alternation of the genes in our body in order to prevent or treat disease. It has been used in medicine for some time now, but is still in its infancy. Alistair Kent is the director of the Genetic Interest Group, a national alliance of organizations which supports families and individuals affected by genetic disorders. There's been a lot of basic research about gene therapy, trying to alter people's genetic makeup so that um, deleterious mutations are either overridden or, or, or not allowed to exercise their, their, their influence. At the moment that's still very experimental and there's no, um, there's no readily available therapy um, available for people who need it. But in the future I've no doubt that it'll happen. Well, when you think of um, things like cystic fibrosis, cystic fibrosis is, ca is caused by a defect in, in one base pair in a gene and um, if you could repair that, then you could perhaps um, prevent people from getting um, cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is the most common life-threatening genetic disease in the UK caused by mutations in a single gene. At present, there is no cure for it, but the faulty gene has been identified and doctors and scientists are working to find ways of repairing it or replacing it. 30-year-old Matthew Heather works in the Cystic Fibrosis Trust and is a patient himself. CF put um, really succinctly is, is a disease which genetically there's a, a faulty gene on the chromosome number seven which causes the body to produce thick mucus in the lungs and the digestive system. I was diagnosed at the age of three and uh, I'm 30 now, just 30, but my health is completely different than someone normal with CF. I do know the bad side of it and it's one of those diseases that once it gets bad it's really difficult to get to a, a good level again. So uh, yes and we feel that our gene therapy program is where the future for people with CF lies. Genetics are in the news, in the movies and all around us. The term genetic engineering is familiar to our ears. However, people seem to have rather different ideas of what it is. What do I know about it? I'm, I'm a bit worried about what I might be getting to eat. No, I'm not familiar with that. It's basically used to manipulate genes in the body um, in order to, uh, to get what your preferred uh, human spe specimen is. Um, it's a technique for accelerating the processes that nature indulges in herself. Um, that, uh, well, just taking genes turning them into something else that they're not, I guess. Um, I don't know, do it with food, do it with um, people's uh, genes as well. I know that probably everything we eat currently has some kind of element of genetic modification. I think it's the artificial development of human tissue. Potentially, the technology of germline genetic engineering could be used not only for therapeutical purposes, but also for enhancing human traits and abilities which will be passed on to our children.
Bill McKibben is the author of the book Enough, Genetic Engineering and the End of Human Nature. He believes that this technology would lead us to a future where lab workers will adjust genes in human embryos to produce a super race. In the talk he gave in the Royal Institution, he quotes James Watson, a DNA pioneer, on his aspiration for a genetically modified society. That James Watson is routinely, in as late as this spring, called for his colleagues to have the, the guts, as he puts it, to use the germline technologies already employed by other animals in order to ensure that among human beings there are, in his words, no more stupid people, no more shy people, no more ugly babies, and a long list of others. Terms such as designer babies, human cloning, and the potential emergence of a super race come into surface in the media every now and then, stirring a lot of controversy. Dr. Bill Albert is a member of the Human Genetics Commission and the British Council of Disabled People. He's presenting at the London Cafe the talk titled Who is Afraid of Designer Babies? So let's extend the menu. Let's talk about children with more intelligence, children with musical ability, children of a specific height or a specific color. Where is the line going to be drawn between making babies healthy, so-called, and making sure they have specific attributes? Now, of course, first point to make about this is that we don't know enough yet to make these kinds of changes about specific abilities. But as I will argue in a minute, this does not lessen the urgency of having this kind of discussion now. So what's the problem? It's not only a question of who's afraid of designer babies, but what designer babies we should be afraid of.